And we'll do one more variation on this. I added a comment or changed the comment that we had for these flow line tool paths. And the first one says we have a chain control with an inch and a half height along because we're cutting along the surface. And the other one, I have a chain control with a half inch height cutting along the surface. And what I want to do is take both of those tool paths, hold down my right mouse button, and copy after. And we're going to start by modifying operation number nine here, go into the parameters, and the thing that I want to change is for my cut pattern, my flow parameters, I want to change my cut direction. So we'll be cutting across this instead of along. So let's OK that. Let's take a look at our tool axis control. And for our chain, we want to change our options so that we're going to be at the closest point on the chain. OK that. And regenerate. So now we're cutting back and forth along this as we step along that chain. Let's do the same thing with the other one that uses the chain at the inch and a half height. So again, our cut pattern, flow parameters, change the cut direction, so we're going across instead of along. For our tool axis control, where we select our chain, we're going to tell it that chain should be at the closest point on the chain. OK that, and regenerate that. Now, you can also see some minor differences in the way these tool paths look. You can see with the one that has the higher chain, it doesn't go as far across because it has to maintain that centerline position further up. But when the chain is closer to the surface, it actually can tilt back and forth further so it gets up around these edges more. So look at your tool path and see what you're getting. This doesn't mean that it's cutting more. This one doesn't mean that it's cutting less. It's still cutting the same thing. It's how much motion is being used to cut that same area. So we'll pick this one with the inch and a half height. And you probably should change this comment. Instead of saying along, this should say across. And we'll back plot this one. So as it follows that chain, it's cutting back and forth. Again, it doesn't have to tilt very much because the chain is so high above the part. For the shorter chain, we'll take a look at this one in back plot. Now we can see there's a lot more tilt. It has to go back and forth a little bit more because the center line of that chain is so close to the surface that it's cutting. So that gives you a little more insight about control, a little bit more about the flow line toolpath. And while we're in here, I'm going to take a look at the parameters for this flow line again. And there's an option down here that says roughing. So if this channel was really deep, I might want to take it in multiple depth cuts. So I can turn this on, tell it how many cuts I want to take. So we'll say we want two rough cuts stepping down. And we'll tell it that we want that rough cut step to be about 70 thousandths per level of cut. I can also add a finish cut to that. I could add a number of finish cuts to that in any amount that I choose. And then we can tell it we want the cut order to be by contour or by depth. Now, by contour means that when it takes a single cut, it will cut at the first depth and then the second depth and the third depth till it reaches the full depth. By depth means that it's going to cut all the way across for the first level and then all the way across for the second level until it reaches all of the rough cuts and then all of the finish cuts. We're going to do by depth. I think that's the best way to do it. So with that selected, we're going to say OK and we're going to regenerate this. And now we can see that there's two cuts going down. So the first cut is leaving 70 thousandths and then the second cut cleans that up. So just another option for using Flowline.